Okay, in section 1.6 of my video lectures, we're going to talk about graphing linear equations of two variables. Now, we've already talked a little bit about graphing lines, but we're, we're going to get deeper into it in this section. We're going to talk about several forms of a line. So the first thing I want to talk about is the slope-intercept form of a line. So the slope-intercept form of a line is actually when you write the line as y equals mx plus b. And we're going to assume that x is the independent variable and y is the dependent variable. We'll have some applications where we might shake up the variables and use something different. But most of the time, we'll use x and y. Okay, now this is the slope-intercept form. And m actually represents the slope of the line. And b, which is the constant, or you could say the point 0 comma b represents the y-intercept. So given the, the y-intercept and the slope of the line, you can easily graph the line. Um, another way this might be written when you're working with polynomials is they might use a notation like this, where they use, for the coefficients, they'll use like a a naught, a1, a2, and so forth. But in here, we're just going to stick with y equals mx plus b. Now, I want to just show you a couple of examples. If you have a line equation written like this, y equals minus 5x plus 4, then the coefficient of x is m. So that tells you your slope is negative 5, or negative 5 over 1. And then the 4, the constant, since it's plus 4, would be your y-intercept. Another example, you could have fractions. y equals 3 halves x minus 2. The coefficient here of x is 3 halves, so the slope is 3 halves. And the y-intercept would be the point negative 2 thirds. Now, we can graph this line simply by knowing the slope is negative 5 over 1 and the y-intercept is 4. Um, let me show you. Uh, remember the y-intercept here 0, 4. So we can obviously determine the y-intercept, which is 0, 4. You'll notice I put some other points there, but, but I'll show you how I got those other points. If the slope is negative 5 over 1, then the negative 5 on top tells me I need to run negatively, I mean rise, rise negatively. So I go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And then over 1 tells me I run positively, so run to the right 1, and I get this point, which is actually the point 1, negative 1. And if I did it again, go down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then run to the right, I get this point, which is 2, negative 6. And of course, then you just get a ruler and draw a line through those three points, and guess what? You get that line right there. So that's how you can... Um, get the uh, graph of a line using the y-intercept and the slope. But the key is to plot the y-intercept first and then work for, for other points, try to find other points using the slope. So as I said, um, as I said a minute ago, um, the slope represents rise over run. So if you want to go from one point to another point on the graph, you just you can use this concept. So if the slope was negative three halves, then you would have a rise of negative three, which basically means go down three units, and a run of two, which means go right. Where am I at here? Go right two units. And so, if you even if you were to think of it flipped over instead of negative three over two, if you thought of it as three over negative two, this would work as well because if you went up three units and left two units, you would also get points on the graph. If you go back to the example that I just did, I mean, if I went, instead of going down five into the right one, if I went up five, one, two, three, four, five, into the left one, I would get another point on the graph there. It's not cooperating with me, but you get what I'm saying. There we do. There we go. So we would get another point on the graph. So you know, you could think of the slope as negative 5 over 1, or you could think of it as 5 over negative 1, and it will still work to give you points on the graph. Now, so to graph these lines using the slope and y-intercept, the first one's pretty straightforward. 
if the line is written in the slope intercept form then you can easily pick off the slope here the slope would be negative three halves the y-intercept would be the point zero four so what we would do is we would plot the point zero four and then from there we would go down three units and to the right two units let me set that up and we'll do it so what we do is we plot the point zero four right wasn't that the y-intercept yeah zero four and then once we plot that point um, we use the slope remember the slope was negative three over two so all I have to do is go down uh, let's see go down here go down one two three to here and then go over one two to here and that would give me the point two one and then I could just draw the line through those points now if you wanted to do it again we could do it again go down one two three and then over two and get this point you know if you want to make sure but you know draw the line through those two points or three points depending on how many you want to draw and then you'll get this line okay so here's your line that goes through those two points 0 4 and 2 1 now if the line is written in this form and you want to find the uh, gra you want to graph the line by using the slope and the y-intercept you're going to have to solve for y so all you have to do, you know, you can subtract 2x from both sides and get the minus 2x over here with the plus 10. And then you're going to have to divide everything by negative 5. So if I take negative 2 and divide it by negative 5, I get a positive 2 fifths. And if I take 10 and divide it by negative 5, I'm going to get a negative 2. Okay, so now it's in the y equals mx plus b. So m, the slope, is positive two-fifths. Now when it's minus a number that's the same as plus a negative so that just means the y-intercept is negative two or the point zero negative two. So I can use the two-fifths and the y-intercept to graph it and if you want to you can pause the video and try it yourself here while I set it up. Okay, so I know that this is the y-intercept, the point 0, negative 2. So all I need to do, since the slope was 2 fifths, um, what I've got to do is I've got to go rise 2 and run 5. So let's go up 2 and then over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And it looks like I get this point right here, which is actually the point 5, 0. Now again, if you want to do it again, just to make sure, go up two and then run one, two, three, four, five. You get this point, which is actually the point ten two. So now I've got three points, and so all I have to do is draw a line through that. And if you draw the line through that, that these three points, that will give you the graph of the line. And so watch me, watch me do this real quick. Bam! There it is. I drew the line. Do you see me? I'm fast, man. I'm fast. All right. So anyway, again, make sure you're doing this by hand and not using um, these. I just use these uh, programs for uh, making life a little bit easier when I show you the graphs. Now, basically, what I just showed you was the standard form of a line. So if a line's written with both the X and Y on one side of the equal sign, and there's no fractions and that's standard form um, it could also be written this way where the constants over there with the X and Y but if it is written that way that's fine but the point is if you want to find the intercepts uh, I mean if you want to find the slope and Y intercept um, of this form you've got to do what I did up here and solve it for Y But you don't have to solve it for y if it's written in this form because it's actually easier for me to look at this and say, okay, if x were 0, I would have the equation minus 5y equals 10, which I can solve for y equal negative 2, which gives me the y-intercept of 0, negative 2. And then I could let y equal 0, and that would give me 2x equals 10, which would give me x equal 5, and that gives me the intercept 5, 0. 
So then I could plot the points um, or graph the line just by plotting those two points. So you can see that here's the y-intercept, here's the x-intercept, and I only need two points to plot a line. So I can just draw the line that goes through these two points, and of course I get the graph of the line. Okay, here's another one. Um, if you want to try to graph it yourself, you can pause the video. But here we're going to graph 3x minus 4y equal 12. I'm going to let x equal 0, and I'm going to solve for y, and I'm going to get y is negative 3. So that's my y-intercept. And then I'm going to let y equal 0, and that's going to leave me with 3x equals 12. And then if I solve that for x, I get x equals 4, and so the x-intercept would be 4, 0. And all I have to do is plot those two points on the graph and then connect the line. So if you look at the graph, you'll see I have the two intercepts, the x and y intercepts here plotted. And then I just draw the line through them and bam, I have my equation graphed. It's good to be able to write a graph from one form to another. Here's a graph in slope intercept form and I want to write it in standard form. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of my fraction since I have a fraction here. And so I'm going to multiply everybody by 5. So I'll multiply y by 5. I'll multiply this by 5. I'll multiply this by 5. And here, of course, the 5s will cancel. So I have 5y equals minus 3x plus 20. And then standard form, you want your x's and y's on the same side. So let's move the minus 3x over here. And I get 3x plus 5y equals 20. Now that's the way I would leave it, but it could also be written like this, 3x plus 5y minus 20 equals 0. Now, to go the other way, if you're given it in this form, you already saw me do this once. You just want to solve this for y to put it in slope-intercept form. So subtract 2x from both sides, and I get minus 3y equals minus 2x plus 8, and then divide both sides by negative 3, and I get y equals 2 thirds x minus eight thirds and that's the slope intercept form of the line. Okay I'm just going to do one example of this form the point slope form. The point slope form is what you can use when you are given a point that the line goes through but that point's not the y-intercept and you have the slope. So let's look at um, let's just look at number three here okay number three. I want to find the line that goes through the points negative 3, 4, and negative 5, 8. That negative didn't drop down for me. Okay, so what I need to do first is I need the slope. And as long as I have two points on the line, I can get the slope. So the slope formula would be, you know, take the y value here minus the y value here. We get 4. And then the x value here minus the x value here. And we get, uh, or actually the other way around, minus 5 minus negative 3 would give us minus 5 plus 3, which is minus 2, and 4 over negative 2 is negative 2. So that's the slope. And now I have the point, negative 3, 4. Now, if I use this form up here, I put the y value for y1, and I put the x value for x1. And so I have y minus y1 is equal to the slope times x minus x1, and that's minus a negative 3, so that's actually going to be x plus 3. And so I have y minus 4 equals minus 2x plus 3. Remember, you put the slope here. And then you have to distribute that minus 2. So that's minus 2x minus 6. And so I have y minus 4 equals minus 2x minus 6. And y equals minus 2x minus 2. Okay? Pause the video and give this one a try. And then just look at it and see if you get the same thing that I got. But basically, my point is negative 2, 5, and you're given the slope here. So you don't really need to look for the slope in this one. Number 4 here is really just like number 3, except something interesting happens here. When you find the slope of this line, you're actually going to get 0. So when you plug the point minus 1, 3 in, you get y minus 3 equals 0 times x minus negative 1. But, um, and of course I used this one, this point, and I get y minus 3. Well, this is just going to be 0, so I get y minus 3 equals 0. So I get the line y equals 3, which is just a horizontal line. 
And that's the end of this lecture. I'll pick up on the next one.